Hello, I'm Ramirez with Tidewater Renaissance Fighting Arts, and today we're going to talk about basically starting out in armor for Harness Vecton, part two in my three-part series for Harness Vecton. I'm going to assume that you are new to armor, and that if you want to get into armor, uh, some things that will help you out. Firstly, everyone who gets into Harness Vecton or sees Harness Vecton sees these glorious sets of armor. And I have to tell you that no one starts out there. You're not going to start out walking onto your first day at Harness Vecton looking like a knight out of Excalibur. The reason for this is those armors are very expensive. And if this is your first time entering into the hobby, you're probably not going to want to put that kind of money into it. What your goal should be is that you are functionally capable of fighting and that you have equipment that will keep you safe. So with that in mind, we're going to talk a little bit about each of those parts. First is your soft kit. That means you're going to need a gambeson. And with that gambeson, I would suggest an arming belt. That's a belt to tie your legs to. And if you can afford it, to have padded chosses. These are padded leg sleeves. They're good for um, pointing your greaves to, and they help with padding. If you can't do that, just some sweats and some knee pads, and you know, you're probably not going to be going into greaves right away. So let's get to the armor itself. Once again, for Harness Vecton, you want to focus on armors that are period-specific for the 14th, 15th, and 16th century. That's kind of the time frame that most of us are using. If you, no matter how sweet a Viking helmet might look, and you're like, I want to get that, don't. Uh, if you have a club that already has a Harness Vecton program, talk with the people who are already doing it. They will steer you in the right direction. So, starting out, your helmet. Your helmet should be at least 16 gauge steel. Uh, you should make sure that it has fairly small eye slits or that it has perforated plate anywhere that there's a hole bigger than a half inch, or sorry, a quarter inch. Uh, you might say, wow, that's really narrow, but there are standards to protect you. So if you get some sugar loaf helm that has really big eye slots, you're, you're not gonna be allowed to use it unless it has perf plate over the eye slots. I say 16 gauge, because there are lighter helmets out there. That's a minimum. 14 is probably better. 12 might be a little extreme, um, but it's not out of the realm of possibility, especially if it's mild steel. Uh, you'll hear a lot of different steels out there. Mild steel, stainless steel, hardened steel. Uh, these are different types. And you can go into other videos that'll talk about that. If you do have a question on something I'm going over, please leave a comment below. I'll either answer it there or I'll answer it in the next video. After your helmet, you're gonna need a gorget or a standard. A standard is basically chainmail. A gorget is generally a, a solid steel neck protection. Uh, if you're getting a standard, be aware that some places still require you to have some sort of steel in the standard covering the throat because thrusts can get in there and they are part of the game. Moving on from your gorget or your standard, you're going to want a male shirt. And the reason for that is a lot of our attacks are based on stabbing. Uh, this is different from Bohurt or other things. You're going to want to have that chainmail skirt, or sorry, chainmail shirt. And I recommend that you either have riveted mail or riveted and solid mail, which means the links are either all riveted shut or they alternate from a riveted link to a solid link with no break. What you don't want is butted mail. That's where they're just kind of bent together. Uh, those will break very quickly and your shirt will look like Swiss cheese in no time. When you're going for mail, I strongly suggest that you get what we refer to often as Indian mail, which is chain mail, it's made in India. Uh, it's kind of the cheapest option. Uh, you can get it in other metals other than mild steel. Mild steel is probably the most common, and a shirt should run you approximately $300. Uh, there's some a little higher, some a little lower, uh, depending on how fancy you get with it. If you change the metals, it'll go up in cost. I don't recommend you get the voiders and other types and piece it together until you have the experience to do so, or if you have a member of your club that can kind of guide you through that process. Uh, Chainmail shirt is probably the simplest, easiest way to go. 
once again, make sure it's riveted now. Then we get to the chest, and the simplest way is a metal breastplate. You can get metal press, breastplates for anywhere from $100 to $150 in mild steel. Once again, make sure it's a minimum of 16 gauge. Uh, they do make some with placards, but remember that any breastplate you have should actually, if it doesn't have a placard, it should come just, just about at the rib level, maybe a little bit lower. You don't want anything that goes down to your hips, unless it's a placard, which is the secondary part that covers the lower abdomen, and they're separately attached. If it's all one piece, all the way down to your hips, you won't be able to bend properly. You're better off having just a breastplate to start out than having something bigger, and also, cuirasses are going to basically double your cost. So if a breastplate on the high end is 150 expect that a cuirass is going to probably go around 300 And since you already have a chainmail, that'd be like $600 versus just the, the $100, $150 one. And then all your chest armor is basically around 450 Next, as far as the arms, you're going to have your uh, pauldron or your spalder. I have a video on the differences. And that can be just one piece or it can be a piece with separated lanes. You're gonna want your elbow and your forearm protected. Most of the time they will just call these plate arms and they will usually be attached by leather. There will be a metal cop. There may be an additional upper piece. Um, and then there will be a lower cannon. If you have those big arms, remember they need to be pointed to either the chainmail or the gambeson. They can't just be tied on the, they can't just be buckled down because they'll slide off your arms. Next, you have gauntlets. I will get to those in a little bit when I talk about something else. As far as your leg protection, generally they sell what's called steel legs, and that's going to include your quis, your pollen, or your knee cop, knee protector, and then a half greave which is just a couple of lanes below the knee. It helps to, it looks like it's a complete leg, but it's not, it doesn't go all the way down to your ankle and doesn't go to your foot. Once again, 16 gauge mild, perfectly fine. There are a lot of variations out there to purchase. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And that should be it. Obviously, if you're a, of the gentleman lead persuasion, you should be wearing your cup if you're a uh, female getting into this, you should have the appropriate chest protector underneath that, though if you get a good breastplate that will supplant any need for any uh, plastic chest protector. Next up, you can get greaves and sabatons, that's for the ankle and for the foot. Talk with your group before you get those because you may not need them and it's an extra expense. So I'm going to tell you right now, don't really worry about those. But if you do have questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer that. When it comes to where to get things, we talked a little bit about Indian Mail. There are other websites that will have mail that's more tailored, be a lot more expensive. But if you go on to Etsy, type in chain mail shirt, you'll, you'll get a number of vendors who make those types of shirts. Just remember, riveted mail. That's, that's the one thing I want you to keep in mind as far as cleaning, chain mail. Um, all your armor tends to come heavily in oil. Uh, Knight Errant gives a good video on cleaning chain mail. I strongly recommend that. Uh, armor, just wipe off the old grease, put ballastol or, or fluid film as your oil. You'll be a lot happier. Gauntlets. I want to talk about there's kind of three tiers to purchasing armor. There's what we call munitions grade. It's oftentimes going to be stainless steel. Do check the gauge of, of it so that it's at least 16 gauge or uh, lower. So if it goes higher, it's not bigger or thicker. It's actually thinner as you go up. So uh, 16, 14, 12, those are the numbers to keep in mind. And most of the munition stuff is going to be 16. If it says 18 or 19 gauge, that's for LARP. Don't, don't get that. Munitions grade is going to be available on, on websites like Medieval Collectibles or Cult of Athena. You'll find that kind of functional armor, they'll call it, and it's at the lowest grade. It's a standard set of sizes. Um, you don't have a whole lot of options, and there aren't a whole lot of bells and whistles. But the good news is, it's cheap. 
And how cheap are you going to ask me? Well, on the third tier of what I'm going to recommend, this is a gauntlet from Arm Street. You can see it has some really nice detailing on it, brass, brass rivets, um, fits like a glove, quite literally, because it's a glove. Finger action's nice, fairly deep dishing on the finger plates. Very, very beautiful. And also $524 before shipping. So that's pretty expensive. On the other extreme, this is a Lord of Battles from Cult of Athena. I got it on sale for, I want to say $130. I think most of the others in a similar design are still under $200. It's not perfect. It's heavy. It's heavier in my hand. The weight tends to press a little bit on my knuckles. And you'll see that the, the lames are a little thinner in comparison to the Arm Street Gauntlet. It'll still do the job until you can get to a point where you want to spend $525 versus under 200. I think the, the silver version is probably around 170, I wanna say. Um, this one was, it was on sale for 130 and that's why I went ahead and got it as a practice loaner uh, gauntlets for my club. Munitions grade, Indian grade, then kind of custom sized made to measure. So munitions grade, you're gonna get off a website standard sizes. If you go online, especially if you go onto Etsy or something, you'll find companies like Barina Emporium. Um, you'll find HMB, Honorcraft. And these are basically the same companies that make armor for, for Cult of Athena, for Lord of Battles, you know, all that type. But they make the mass stuff for them, but they're also willing to make stuff custom for you. And that can be kind of nice because you can get stuff custom sized. Uh, oftentimes they will offer you the chance to send your measurements be very clear if they say centimeters do centimeters inches do inches but they will make stuff in your size and they'll also occasionally they'll, they'll up the metals so you don't have a choice in munitions grade it'll almost always be staying uh, mild steel but sometimes if you go directly to the Indian manufacturers and you want stainless steel for a small upcharge they'll make it out of stainless steel which is nice and they'll make it in your size even better. The next tier up is most of the um, popular armor sellers that will make things custom sized to you. They make beautiful work, significantly more expensive. Uh, the first one is Arm Street. They'll make some really, really nice armor for you. They will size it to your sizes. You send them your measurements and they will make that for you. Um, Steel Mastery is another site. Forge of Svan is another site, but you're going to start looking at those numbers and going, hey, uh, maybe this is a little more expensive than I planned to uh, purchase. And I've gone there and gone through the army and said, I want this, I want this, I want this, that, that, here's all the settings. And I've come up with those numbers and been like, uh, yeah, I'm not getting that today. That's fine. I could get it eventually if I really want it, but that's probably not where you're going to start. If you get one or two things from there, great it's a wonderful way to start out um, I got my first helmet from Arm Street I got my gauntlets from Arm Street and you can do that too another option instead of a breastplate is a brigandine and there are a number of places to get brigandines um, I'm gonna say they're a little more expensive than just going the breastplate route probably at about double the cost because they are going to cover the entire chest the last thought I want to give you is that getting armor, part of your journey is not only learning to fight in armor, learning to wear the armor, but learning to repair the armor. So I've put out a video on making your own arming points, but you have to be prepared to make buckles and straps, learn how to rivet uh, leather and armor pieces together because stuff breaks. And it might cost you less than $5 to repair something, and it will cost you significantly more to replace the entire piece. But you're going to have to learn some skills, how to sew leather, how if you're sewing, let's say, a gauntlet back together. You might need to learn how to rivet and you know, get a hammer, get a small anvil, and learn how to, how to do that. 
you may have to learn how to make um, buckles and straps yourself and get some leather, get some basic leather working tools. You don't need to learn that right away, especially if you have a larger club that you can kind of um, get help from. But if you're starting out and no one else is doing that, that's something you're going to have to learn on your own. I plan to do more videos on how to do some of those things to help you out. Uh, some of the Boher groups also have videos and some like putting a strap or learning to rivet. Doesn't matter which combat sport you learn it from as long as you learn it. Also, maintaining it, keeping your uh, armor oiled, keeping your leather um, hydrated is also an important part of getting into harness. So understand that getting into harness is not simply buying armor, wearing armor, fighting in armor, but it's also repairing and maintaining armor. That's all part of the journey that is harness victim. So I'm gonna try to finish out, give you some last words of wisdom, which is remember yourself, gambeson, arming belt, chassis. Remember that as far as mail goes, you want it riveted, not butted mail. And it can be riveted with solid rings or just riveted. It can be mild steel, it can be stainless steel. If you want to go outrageous, it can be a titanium. But I suggest staying with mild steel, maybe stainless if you're really that worried about uh, rusting. But if you take care of it, and Knight Errant has a nice video on taking care of mail, um, and keep it oiled, you'll be in good shape. When you do this, remember you're not only about the fighting and the wearing and the buying, but also the maintaining that you're going to have to do. That's something you're going to have to commit to. And I think that's about it. Um, there may be more questions that you have, and I wouldn't blame you because I went through this really, really fast. I am going to try to put some different links down there. Uh, in the description for some of the sites that I've mentioned. So hopefully that will help you get a starting ground for where to go to get things. Uh, these are not the only sites, but they should give you a good starting basis. And other than that, I hope that this hasn't dissuaded you from doing Harness Vectum. Hopefully it's only excited you to doing it. And remember, for every person that has a uh, set of armor that looks like they walked off a movie set, that's probably not their first suit of armor. So just keep that in mind. We all start somewhere, and then we can only go up from there. As long as we stay true to our craft, keep practicing, keep growing, and I'll see you in the next video.